Hey guys, it's Julia here, and in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to fix any corruption on your computer. Like if you're having some problems and you just want to make sure your system is good, I'm going to show you guys how to do that because I'm actually having some issues right now where my file shares aren't working and they work on other computers, but it's not working on mine. And I've been having this problem for like the past week, so only rebooting seems to fix it and I don't really have to keep rebooting my computer so I'm gonna check for any corruption and see if there's any problems with my computer that might be preventing this from working. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open a command prompt with admin so I right click the start menu and I open command prompt admin and you'll see this UAC pop up which you guys can actually see because I have it set to not dim the screen but for you guys it probably will dim the screen. So I'm gonna click yes, and you can see we have our admin command prompt here. So you're gonna type sfc space slash scan now and push enter. And this will run a system file check because it's called system file checker, which it pretty much just checks all the hashes on all the system files to make sure that there's no integrity violations. And if there is, it will tell you. And if not, it'll say there's none. So. There's three things you can see on the screen. You can see it say it found corrupt files and successfully repaired, which is a good thing. You can also see found corrupt files and didn't repair or unable to repair, which is not good. And three, that it found no integrity violations, meaning there was no corruption as far as the system knows. Now I've noticed when running this, usually I get the one that says it found files and fixed them, which is probably what we're going to see honestly, because it seems like what I always see every time I run this. So we're gonna let this run and I'm gonna come back when it's done. All right, so just as I expected, it found corrupt files and successfully repaired, which is a good thing. I would suggest running it again just to see if it finds any other corruptions because sometimes it can find more, but it seems like every time I run SFC, I just get this. So I wonder if I'm gonna get it again if I run this again, because if it keeps finding corruption and fixing it, that's a bit concerning, which there's another command I'm gonna show you guys that we're gonna also try to fix any corruption as well. So let's just see if this finds any more a second time. So guys, I found corruption again. So there's another command we're going to do to check for more. So dism slash online slash cleanup dash image, and we're gonna do scan health. Now this will check for any corruptions as well because it'll scan the health. I feel like DISM could be more useful than SFC can in some cases, and I recommend using both. Even if this doesn't find anything, I'm still going to have it repair anyway because maybe there is some problems, I don't know. But I'm still going to do it for demonstration of this video. So I'm not sure if this will find anything, but I think it'll say either there's no corruption or it's repairable or I don't even know what the other one is, probably not like really corrupted or something like that. I haven't ran this in a while so I don't know if it's actually going to find anything on my system or not, but based on the fact it keeps finding corruption, I would not be surprised if it finds something wrong. So in some cases though it won't, so it's really interesting. It's taken a while at the end, that's kind of concerning. I feel like it found something. It doesn't say it found anything because it says no component store corruption detected, which is interesting, but there after scan health, there's also check health, but that's probably just gonna throw back the same thing again because it already scanned. But if you wanna repair it, you type restore health. Even though it didn't find anything wrong, I'm still going to do it. So it says the restore operation completed successfully, even though it didn't find anything before. Maybe it did do something, maybe it didn't. But if you get any errors here and it's just not working to restore health, there is another method you can do, which I will show you guys. Now first you need to see what version of Windows you're on. So right click your start button, click run, type Winver and click OK. And here you'll get this box, which will tell you the version you're on, the OS build you're on, and the edition. So I'm running Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC 2021, so it's build 19044. The dot number doesn't really matter as long as you get this correct and this correct. So the edition and the OS build is really the most important things because you're going to need an ISO of that. So that way you could use it to help repair your system. Like if it's unable to get the files or sometimes I've seen in some cases when it fails, it says the source can't be found because 
generally when you don't specify a source, it'll rely on Windows Update to get the files, but like if Windows Update is corrupted, then it can't and it'll fail. So we're gonna do it in this case just to show you guys how to do it. So you're gonna wanna have an ISO. So I have my Ventoy here and I do have the ISO LTSC 2021. I'm gonna mount it and you guys can see it's drive G. So what we're gonna type here, hopefully this works. It doesn't always work for me for some reason. DISM slash online slash cleanup dash image slash restore health and then slash source colon and then you're going to specify your source so if i go back here just to confirm it's g so g colon slash sources slash install dot win it didn't work as you can see for some reason maybe i typed it wrong oh i, I typoed that okay so this will use the WIM file to actually repair the image. So if Windows can't download the files, it'll just go to this file instead. You may want to check in your sources folder if it's .wim or .esd because I've seen in some cases it be .esd and in some cases .wim. They can vary, so you need to specify the correct one for this to work. There is other ways to do this too, like you could actually mount the WIM file with commands and then have it rely on that too. There's many ways you can do this, but this is probably the easiest method for most people to do, which is why I decided to choose this method. Although there's cases where I had to do this in Windows Recovery because I've had systems not boot completely before and I wanted to fix any corruption with them. Some cases it worked, some cases it didn't. But I remember having to do all these commands and figure out for hours why a system wouldn't boot. So you guys can see the restore operation completed successfully. So it successfully used this win file to restore the stuff. Now, if you don't want it to use Windows Update, you can actually add something on to this. So you can add slash limit access at the very end of the command. But I believe that might require you to mounted i'm not sure you guys could see that this worked so we don't need to worry about it because it worked so at this point let's try and run our sfc again let's see if this finds anything now because we use dism both the win file and the one through windows update just to see and let's see if it fixes it and finds no integrity violations now all right, well, we've got the same thing again. I'm not sure why my system keeps finding corruption and repairing it. It's kind of strange. Another thing I forgot to say is after doing all these SFC and TISM commands, be sure to reboot your computer because that would also help too. And sometimes you need to reboot after repairing stuff. So I'll probably reboot after I get this video edited, but I would highly recommend doing that because that way it's just better to do that. But if you're having problems with your computer still after this, or the repairs are not working correctly, what you could do as a last resort is download an ISO, or if you already have the ISO because you tried the source thing, open it and just run setup.exe and do an in-place upgrade, aka a repair install of the same build, because this will fix any corruption and basically it'll re-upgrade Windows so it's replacing all the system files. Therefore, if you were having any problems, you could just run this, tell it to upgrade, make sure it says it's gonna keep all your files, it should, but just make sure it does, obviously, before you continue. It would pop up a message saying, are you sure if it wasn't gonna keep your files on that choose what to keep screen, it would be like, are you sure you wanna do this? Because obviously you don't wanna necessarily reinstall, but this should keep all your files, as long as you're using the correct version. Even if it's newer than what you have, that also works. Like if you're on an older Windows 10 version and say your updates aren't working, so you're trying to repair it with SFC and DISM, you could just download a newer version at 10 or 11, because this will work on Windows 11 as well, like all these commands I'm showing. And you could just upgrade with the ISO and that would probably fix your issues. And then afterwards, be sure to open settings, update and security, 
and check for updates. That way you get the latest updates and everything will work. So you can see my Windows update last checked yesterday. So I'll check for updates and see if I get anything. Probably not because it checked yesterday, but I've seen in some cases, if your system's corrupt, Windows update will fail, but not always, it just depends. So we just got a Defender update and that's it. There's also optional updates you can do, except I'm not going to do this display driver because that's actually downgrading it. And I think this is for my external hard drive. I'm just gonna leave that be for now, but I did get all the important optionals because usually I do the optional updates when I install Windows as well. So anyways, that'll do it for this video. Just a quick video to show you guys how to fix certain things. There's also ways you can run an offline SFC scan. Like if your system will not boot and you have to go to recovery, there's like another command you have to do in order to run SFC in a Windows recovery. But yeah, and obviously in a Windows recovery, you will have to specify the source for DISM because it can't necessarily use Windows Update in recovery. So anyways, hope this helps. If you guys have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll be sure to help you guys. So thanks for watching this video and bye-bye for now.